Hi everybody, welcome to the Piece of Eden Homestead Kitchen. I'm here today to do something with all of this cabbage I have. Um, I love cabbage, it's a great vegetable, cooked even raw, um, but one of my favorite ways to have cabbage is as sauerkraut. So I'm going to show you guys how to ferment your own sauerkraut and boy I'll tell you I could go through gallons and gallons of this stuff. So um, we're going to do a small batch today and show you how it's done and I'll do larger batches later in the year. But come on along with me and I'll show you how we do it. Thank you. When you're preparing your cabbage to make sauerkraut, you want to make sure that you have you know good fresh heads of cabbage but inevitably there can be a few bad spots or something in that first you want to relieve or remove pardon me the outer leaves they can be tough and a lot of times they're damaged like that one was but you can see like even after removing a couple of leaves there still can be some bad spots in there so when you get that you'll just want to cut around those a good half inch or inch around those just to make sure that you don't have anything like down in the head that's gonna um, mess up the fermentation so once you have the head cleaned up and rinsed off um, I rinsed it off before I started here but once it's cleaned up and the outer leaves are taken off just cut the head of cabbage in half helps to have a good sharp knife now if you look here you can see the core of the cabbage you'll want to cut that out because that's pretty much inedible unless you uh unless you pressure cook it then you can get it tender enough to eat but um, cut that out and then i usually quarter the head of cabbage now at this point you have a choice um traditional sauerkraut is a, a thin slice or shred of cabbage and you can either do it that way or you can actually chunk it up and have you know bigger leaves of cabbage sometimes i like to do it that way um, then you have a little more to bite in but today we're going to do shredded cabbage now they make a specific mandolin and if you have a mandolin you can use that i have a lot of experience with knives so i just usually shred it with the knife and you just chop nice thin slices out of your cabbage head Now this is what you're going for, just, you know, an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch wide slices, and they'll just shred up nicely into your pieces. So, finish this up. I have this one, this small head, and then a really big head. I'm going to do both of these, and then I'll come back to you. you're working along and you get a big pile of cabbage in your way you want to move that to a separate bowl here and set that aside um, you want to make sure that your counter and um, your cutting board and your knife and your hands are impeccably clean I keep a spray bottle of vinegar around that I spray everything down with and wipe it and that kills any bacteria that would cause problems with fermenting this great stuff so I'll get back to work and I'll come back to you when I'm done with the big head so I understand that most people are not nearly so fast with a knife. I've had, you know, over 40 years of cooking experience and working in restaurants and stuff. That's why I'm as quick as I am. But uh, if you have to cut more like this, or even slower, just that's okay too. It's just going to take you a lot longer. Just make sure when you're cutting, you keep your fingers bent under and your knife rides against your finger and you never lift up high enough that you can cut your finger you only lift up so the blade is let me see if i can show you here when you come up see how my knuckle is not to the edge of the blade so i'm only coming up my movements are like this now with something thick like the cabbage the movement i only come up this high but i might chop all the way down to there and then come up this high again and chop all the way down so um if if you can't or I should say if it's too much of a task for you to chop like this or to slice all this stuff up slowly with the knife, you could probably use 
oh I don't know I've never tried it but you might be able to use like a cheese grater I know there's slicers on the sides of some of the bigger cheese box graters um, you could probably use one of those or if you have a food processor with a shredding attachment you might be able to use that as well so, all right so I still have another half a head to go I'll be back in just a couple minutes I almost forgot to tell you guys and I almost forgot to do this myself but when you're uh, before you slice everything up you actually want to uh, keep a couple of the cabbage leaves to the side um, you're going to use that to spread out over all the small cabbage leaves in the jar when you're fermenting it. Um, and that will help the little bits from floating up while it's fermenting. So I'm just going to separate a couple of these nice tender cabbage leaves that are big enough to cover the top of the, the cabbage underneath when it's fermenting. So I'm going to set these aside and save them for later. We have this great big bowl of shredded cabbage. Um, I'm gonna just pull it all apart. There's a couple of bigger leaves that won't hurt anything. But uh, just kind of break it up with your hands. Um, that one's a little too big, so I'll actually go to the side here and shred that one up real quick. So um, when you're doing this, uh, you're gonna need a scale to do it the way I do it. So I'm gonna actually dump this out of the bowl back onto the cutting board and then I'm going to put the bowl on my scale and I'll get an accurate measurement for how much this weighs. And that is why you want to make sure that your entire area is clean and sanitized. So now I'll put the bowl on here. I guess from that perspective, you won't be able to see the weight, but apparently this uh, bowl with a couple little crumbs of uh, uh, little tiny pieces of cabbage in it weighs 557 grams. So I'm going to zero that out, and then I'll add in all the cabbage that we just shredded and get a weight on that. Now it's important to get this weight so that we can have 2.5% of salt in uh, add that to the cabbage um, two and a half percent is my favorite number for fermenting vegetables um, you can go up to four percent but i prefer to stick with two and a half percent if you go below two then you won't end up with a good ferment and it won't be safe so now here's the part that scares a lot of people there's a little bit of math involved fortunately even though there's math involved it's easy math and you can use your calculator. So we have 1,877 grams. Now I'm going to use a calculator and multiply that by 2.5% or by 0 0.025. And then that will give me the number of grams that I need to add of salt. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. So here you can see I have. 1,877 grams of cabbage, and I multiply that by 2.5%, and that gives me 46.925 grams of salt that I need to add. Now, you'll want to use um, kosher salt or um, pickling salt or some non iodized salt that doesn't have um, non caking agents. You don't want to use table salt in this necessarily, but just a more pure. Um, you know kosher salt or pickling salt they're probably your best bet so i'm going to get the uh, small container out and measure out um we'll cut, round that up to 50 grams of salt um and then we will i'll be right back with you for some reason this scale i always either when i tear it out to zero it goes to zero for a second and then it bumps up to either one gram or down to negative one grams but anyway that's close enough um it doesn't, it's not like a perfect science. Like I said, there's a pretty big range of how much salt you can put in here, but it's good to have the numbers so that you can repeat it and make the same recipe again. So we're going to do 50 grams of salt. I'm using pickling salt.
51 is close enough for government work. So I'm going to take this salt and grab my bowl of cabbage. And I'm going to sprinkle this a little bit of this on here. And then I'm going to stir that in. Fold it over from the bottom to get all of the salt mixed in there pretty good. Ooh, there's a big chunk we missed. Um, I'll slice that up real quick and throw it in there. Anyway, so mix that around. Sprinkle some more salt on there. Mix that in really well. Now you don't want to be gentle with this. You, you want to like crunch it and scrunch it and you know work it hard. Really force it in there. Now the reason you're doing that is because that helps break the cell walls of the cabbage and it helps the salt work its way in and the salt will displace water from inside the cabbage and that will give you the juice that will help ferment your cabbage into sauerkraut. So I'm just going to stir this and squish it and you hear it crunching. So once you get that salt mixed in, all we're going to do is we'll cover this up and then come back in an hour or so and check on it and we're going to scrunch it up some more and crunch it and push on it and punch it, whatever. You want to be pretty tough with it um, to really work that salt in really well. So once uh, this sits for an hour we'll come back and we'll do the same thing and after you know a few different tries we'll come back and there will be enough juice that we can put this in a um, container to ferment. Okay so it's been an hour now. Let's take a look at how our cabbage is doing. Now I'm not sure how well it shows up on the video but see how limp it's gotten. It's still crunchy if you can hear it but it's limp and when I squeeze it the water just drips right out so we're gonna go ahead and mix it in some more crunch it up some more work it good and hard nice amount of force I have strong hands so you know it's you guys might have to if you're not you know a carpenter hands if, you, if you're not super strong you may want to you know punch it down and really work it hard because you're mostly working to break the cell walls of the cabbage so the salt can work its way in. So if we look at it, we want to check down in the bottom of the bowl and you can see already some of the juice is coming out. Um, we'll come back later, we want more juice than that so I'm going to let this sit for another hour or so and then we'll come back and do this again. So, it's been two hours now, we'll give this a little crunch in and see how we're doing. Now keep in mind, every time you come back to this, you want to make sure you wash your hands so they're nice and clean. You don't want to get any bad bacteria mixed in with the naturally occurring lactobacillus, I believe is how it's pronounced, bacteria that's on the cabbage. You want that to be able to uh, grow in this. Looks like we got a pretty good amount of liquid now. Um, it's been two hours, a little over two hours I think, since we started mixing the salt in. I'm going to mix it a little bit more and then we'll get it in a jar. So I don't know how good you can tell from the perspective of this camera. But I don't know if you remember how full this bowl was before we added the salt to the cabbage but and how much it's gone down since then. But I just wanted to point out how much it shrinks during this process. So um, we're going to get this in a jar to ferment. I have a gallon sized jar here. It's a glass jar which is good to use. And all we're going to do is transfer the cabbage into this gallon jar. Now as you go, you want to put your hand down in the jar and press it down to get a nice tight packing in there so all the cabbage is in there good and tight.
You see all that water that came out of the cabbage? We're going to pour that back into the jar just to top everything off. Push everything down. Pack it in there good and tight. Get all the air bubbles out. And then you can see that there's liquid on the top. Now remember we reserved some cabbage leaves earlier. We're gonna take those, spread them out over the top, just to keep the little bits from floating. Press those in there. My hand just barely fits in these gallon jars. All right, so now that everything's in there good and tight, we're gonna clean up the outside of the jar and then move on to the next step. What I'm spraying on here is just some distilled white vinegar. We'll spray the outside of the jar and then we can wipe it and get it good and clean. All right, so from this point, the object is to uh, not let air in, but let air out. Now to do that, you need some type of airlock. Now if you're doing this in canning jars, which you could do this in half gallon or quart canning jars, or even pints if you wanted to do a small batch, you can use a, a silicone lid like this. It's got a little nipple on the top that has a hole in it but it stays closed when it's not under pressure. And then when you have the ring on it, holding it on your lid and the air pushes up or the carbon dioxide from the fermentation pushes up, it'll open that and let gas escape. But then when the pressure's lower, it won't let the gas escape. Now, if you don't have one of those, you can use a airlock like this and you put water in the top here and it comes down to there's a fill line on here. I don't think you can see it on the camera. Maybe here you can. So there's a fill line on here. You put water in there until it's that way. And then when you poke this into a hole with the rubber grommet, like if you're doing a five gallon bucket, you can buy fermenting buckets that have a hole with the rubber grommet and you poke that in there. And then as the carbon dioxide pressure builds up, it forces the water up into this tube as the carbon dioxide comes through and then it bubbles out and lets the water fall back down. So, but it will never let air come back, back through the airlock. So you can use that too. Or if you happen to be at your new cabin and don't um, have all of the equipment that you want, <laughs> or if you're at home and you haven't purchased this yet because you're just new at this, you can use this fancy trick which is just some plastic wrap. This is actually a big plastic bag. And then some tape, or you could put a rubber band. I don't happen to have a rubber band, so I'm gonna use tape. And then we're just gonna take the tape and wrap it around here good and tight. It's gonna take a couple of times around. So as I'm going around, I'm stretching the tape almost to the point of breaking and that helps to make a nice airtight seal. And now you can see this is all loose. That doesn't matter as long as it's tight around the outside to hold it in. But now, as the pressure builds up inside this, it would just push this off and then let air in. So you'll need to take a needle or a pin, poke a hole through all the layers, and now as pressure builds up, the carbon dioxide can come through that little tiny hole we put in there and it'll keep this securely here without letting any air back in. So there you have it. That's how you make, well, we've got about a half gallon of, um, 
of sauerkraut here and we're gonna wait three days and we'll test it depends on the temperature it could take you know three days or three weeks if it's cold or it it all depends so just check it occasionally make sure you don't have any funk growing on the top sometimes there will be yeast or something that's growing in there which will just be like a little white haze on the top you can scoop that off if you want um, if it gets any funky color or you know oddball mold or anything growing in there in that case you'll have to throw this away but I think I've only ever had that happen once many years ago when I was first starting. So as long as you keep your hands clean and your surface is clean and everything's good to go, you shouldn't really have to deal with mold issues. So there we have it. That's how you make sauerkraut. One more thing I forgot to mention. When you put this, especially if your jar is almost all the way full, when you put this um, in a dark place to ferment, you want to put some kind of container underneath it in case that liquid boils out of the top. I didn't mention that with this one because as you saw the jar was only half full. It's also not ideal to only have the jar half full. Ideally it would be you know an inch or so from the top. I think this will be okay but if I decide to do it I might transfer this over into a couple of quart jars with regular um, airlock lids on it. So anyway thank you very much for watching. If you uh, like our video go ahead and like it. And then if you'd like to follow more things that we're going to do here on the homestead, um, just, you know, click the subscribe button. And if you really like it or if you want to help your friends out, share it on social media. And we very much appreciate it. Thank you.